What's up YouTubers? Today I've got a special edition from Bradford Through the Lens and plus we're doing a bit of a collab with a local historian who really concentrates on the Halifax side and he does similar videos. His name is Matt Parker. Now my question to you, have you ever wondered why the boar's head is depicted on so many buildings within Bradford it seems to be ingrained in the tapestry of Bradford history and in this video we'll take you to the various locations key locations that are associated with the legend of the ball so we'll go and meet Imtiaz and Matt Parker so here we are you can see Matt and Imtiaz good morning chaps or should I say good afternoon Imtiaz is always the first one on the scene of the crime so explain yourselves lads what you're doing here yeah we're here to do a, uh, a video on the Bradford Bar and we have our friend here to help us today as well How do you? Uh, Matt uh, he has his own YouTube channel, Matt Park 08 and we come here to uh, have a look where the ball came to and um, let the people of Bradford know more about their history story goes back to about 1300 and at one point Bradford was literally a forest and this area belonged to Edward the third son uh, who was called John of Gaunt and he was also the Duke of Lancaster uh, but at the time this was the well where the local people could come and get their water now this was obviously as I said it was forest but there were lots of boars around here but one in particular seemed to like attacking the people who came to the well to the point where the people stopped coming to the well because that boar <laughs> was being a bit of a nuisance so the Duke of Lancaster he decided to put up a reward and essentially whoever killed the boar would get the reward and obviously then they could go back and start using the water again and uh, personal as you say so there's a trough here and this is a well itself that's famous in Bradford's history drinking and the, the hunter okay, um, uses bow and arrow to kill the, um, the boar and it happened to here. That's right so when it was dead um, the Duke of Lancaster had said bring me back its head uh, to prove that it's, it's been killed but because of the size of the boar it was quite a giant thing they decided to just cut out its tongue 
and so he took the tongue back but at the same time he was on the way to see the Duke of Lancaster to claim the reward another person came along found the dead boar and decided that he'd also try and claim the reward and chopped its head off and they both ended up there at the same time um, however obviously the tongue has to have come out of the head so the person who took the tongue he was the one who got the reward and he got a piece of land that we're going to see a little bit later on Right, we're at Bradford City Hall and we're about to go into City Hall to have a look at the artefacts of, uh, that are related to the, to the Huntsman and, and the Bradford Ball. We're going to specifically look at the Gelder's Horn and see just how many images of the ball we can find inside. So this is the Gelder's Horn. We're in the Town Hall uh, in Bradford. Um, look at this. And this is the, the horn, which is supposed to be blown on the 11th of November every year um, since the, uh, the huntsman um, killed the boar. But however, we don't know if this is the original horn, but it, it is an aged artifact. Um, it's old and um, there's absolutely uh, uh, no um, proof that it's actually come from that era, but um, but uh, it is uh, attributed to the uh, to the uh, huntsman's legend. Apparently, could be blown in the marketplace as well. Head into the marketplace and blow it. I right, say on the eleventh of November. Would you be able to blow it, Matt? Do you think? Um, not too good at music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've got a good pair of lungs. Yeah. <laughs> There's the horn itself. It's it's beautifully made. As you can see, it's quite light. Um, maybe you can see the inside of it, Riaz. And you will hand it over to Matt. Yep. And then, if you want to show the other side as well, Matt, that's it. Uh, that's it's very light. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Extraordinary. It's quite a humbling of experience, actually. Definitely. You know what I mean? It's all part. I wonder of the... what those initials mean there. J C. So this is obviously um, the hunter. This is the uh, a representation, as always, of uh, the man who killed the boar. Again, we're a bit confused about the names. We've had different names. Um, we do know that one person actually um, killed the boar, but the plan was to take the head back to the Lord, and the, the man who killed the boar found it too heavy to take. Uh, so instead of taking the whole head, he took the tongue. Later on, another person came along and actually found the dead animal, chopped its head off and took that back to the Lord Man and apparently got there first uh, to claim this reward. Um, however, of course, when they were both there, as one of them had the tongue, it was obvious that he'd got it first. And it shows it in the picture you can see in the... Once one hand over here, you can see the tongue, the boar's tongue. There's a knife there, um, and the boar, which apparently was shot with arrows. Yeah. And you can see it's a, it's actually a very nice picture, isn't it? It's very of that period. Very much so. So of course this head of the boar that appears everywhere over Bradford, um, it's important that it's only an official image if the boar doesn't have its tongue, because it doesn't have the tongue on any of the emblems that you see. Yeah, and if you look closely, you can see it's tongueless. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we've already talked about that the boar is obviously um, a major feature on the coat of arms. Uh, but as you can see, the horn that we've uh, just been looking at is also on the coat of arms. Now, we're in the Lady Mayoress's um, room here in the City Hall. And there's three of the emblems of the coat of arms are above us here. So not only have we got the boar's head, which I would say that one ha might be sticking its tongue out. But you can see the horn there as well. Um, not sure what the sheep's in aid of at the moment, but we can find that out as we go. 
Uh, so now we're in the Lord Mayor's room in the City Hall, and once again, uh, the boar appears. Here he is above the fireplace. A bit further down here, we get the horns again. Okay, so we're still in the City Hall, and above us here we have a rather wonderful carving um, of the event in question. Um, so we have the Lord of the Manor in the middle, who put up the reward for the uh, killing of the boar. And we have either side of him the two people who brought initially on the left hand side. You can see the boar being brought, and on the right hand side, uh, the tongue. And of course, as we've mentioned already, um, they did figure out that the tongue had to have been brought first because that would have come out of the boar's mouth. Uh, but it's a wonderful uh, carving that we're looking at here. Right, we have a maze here in City Hall, and this sits on the, on, on the desk. Uh, you can see here the boar's head, the ram and the goats, and the three gelders' horns. And the same as well at the top of the maze, almost at the top you can see gelders' horns. Okay, so we're now outside of the City Hall. We've just finished our little exploration inside. We found many representations of the boar. We looked at the Gelder's Horn. Uh, we're going to head around town soon and just see where the boar appears. And you might be surprised as to where it turns up. Okay, we're uh, outside the Braff and Alhambra. And opposite is the First and Second World, World War. Um, a memorial and again is a depiction of the boar here with the gelder's horn underneath and again he has a, it proves the point that if you look around Bradford you'll start noticing the boar's head so of course famously this war memorial featured in the film Billy Liar back in the early 60s uh, with Tom Courtney and Rodney Bewes dancing here. Uh, it was very controversial at the time because uh, of course nobody should really have been dancing on a war memorial back then. Um, but yeah, check it out on the film. <laughs> okay, so we're still hunting for the boar. Um, here it features quite prominently on the drain pipe just outside City Hall, all the way up. Again, we can see the depiction of the ball here on this gate. Again, the ball's head. It seems to have uh, two stags or something at the side of it. And again, those horns again. So it's slightly different, this one. Yeah, only two horns. Mm. Okay, this is the former NatWest building in Bradford, City Centre, and you can see it says here Bradford Commercial Bank, and uh, again there's a coat of arms, Boar's Head, and three gelders horns, uh, and it's quite nice when it's colourful. Okay, another street in Bradford, next row up, and we once again find the head of the boar. 
this time above the centre there, then on Kirk Gate. Okay, on I've Gate now, and uh, many a time I've been up and down I've Gate, but I've never noticed the bald hedge, and it is huge. You can even see its hoofs as well, uh, and it's on top of you can see the old crown. Okay, we're in East East Balding now, and uh, we're outside the old police station, which was decommissioned in 1910. Um, then became a Saint, uh, Saint John ambulance depot, and then became an aquarium. Uh, QSS now. If you look above the door, you can see. Coat of arms there the, at the crest, three gilded horns, and above that is a bald head. Now, the snout seems to be pointing towards the right hand side, you can just about see it, and it is a head rather than something chiseled out of, of a stone face. Right, from this angle, you can see the boar's head, you can see the snout and the eyes. And, uh, and the teeth, and it's tongueless again, quite large. Um, uh, and as Matt pointed out correctly, it is this does predate the decommissioning of the uh, of the police station, which was 1910. It's probably been here since, since the building was built. Now we're outside Bolling Hall. Um, we believe once again we're going to find some more images of the boar inside here. Um, so let's go in and see what we can find. Okay, so here we have a boar's head inside Bolling Hall. Most important of all is if you look inside its mouth, there's no tongue. So basically here. Okay, it says here, the tongueless boar links the Tempest family to Bradford. The birds represent loyalty to the family and the crown, and the vines represent resilience and fertility. Right, as we approach the ghost room, we can see part of the coat, uh, coat of arms there, um, the three gilders' horns, and then underneath it, it says Bradford. And as we get, as we come in here, um, look at the ceiling. Matt's pointed out, you can see a ball there, and uh, I think it might be sold, uh, somewhere else as well. There's even a little, little cartoon drawing of it over there. It seems to be if you search in the rooms, look for a boar. I think that's the plan. We've arrived at uh, Hunt Yard um, now. This is the parcel of land that was apparently given to the hunter um, who killed the boar. Um, nowadays it has modern buildings on it. These were built in about 1970, which replaced a, um, a, a several cottages that were on here previously. And you can see there's a there's a plaque here on the floor, which is a celebration of what happened. And um, are you good at speaking Yorkshire? Well, we'll have a go. So there's some old Yorkshire around the side. Uh, so Hunt Yard, so called, because there's a tale at this Mark spot where Barb Lollica, Sean at Bradford Coit of Arms were slain Towden days. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Something yeah. like that. <laughs> and this, uh, that's great. And this piece of land was given to uh, to the hunter, and uh, it's just a shame nobody really knows about it, and it's here. Yeah, it was his, his reward, and again, always well pointing out. No tongue in the boar's head. So the, the hunter himself will have been here on these in this very area. So we're next to a church as well, which um, looks like the gravestones have been removed over time. It's very 
different stories about what this hunter's actual name is. You see one report, it's one thing, you see another, it's another. Um, so it's not easy to track this person down. But again, we have to question, is it just folk tales? Or does this have a ring of truth about it, this story? Remember, we're going back at least 700 years. Mm. And also, with him possibly living around here, was he buried around here? Possibly. Awesome. So there you go folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed that little uh, video blog and do actually visit uh, Matt Parker's uh, YouTube channel, it'll be in the uh, description and we'll meet you on the next blog, peace out. <laughs>